We used to, when we launched, only draw from sustainable fibers, which is organic fibers for our clothing. And we're a fair trade certified brand. But since 2017, we pivoted to not extracting any more from our resources from the earth because of the calamity and the abundance of overstock material and this textile and this what we call dead stock. So it was my conscientious effort to pivot, joined a group of organizations who were very keen on moving the dial so that we can address this huge problem in the fashion textile world. Shamini, I really appreciate you being here with me on the Social Entrepreneurship and Innovation Podcast. And for Thank folks, you, Corey. Uh, for folks who are, who are unfamiliar, would you mind introducing yourself and sharing with us a, a little bit as to what it is that you do? Sure. So, Corey, first of all, full gratitude for even um, inviting me to be on this and to share um, what we do in, as part of our company. So I'm the founder and CEO of Donna Inc. Uh, Donna Inc. is a certified B corporation and we're a fashion tech company transforming customer experience mm. with zero waste design and social environmental impact through circular fashion. Mm. Can you, you say a little bit more about the definition of, of fashion tech? Yeah. Yeah. So for the past 12 years, I've devoted my life towards sustainable and ethical fashion. Um, and we're a fashion brand ourselves um, from zero, uh, from used to be from babies all the way to teenagers. And we've moved up to adults. Uh, today, we are also a fashion technology company unleashing a new technology platform at the end of October. Hmm. Um, and this fashion technology platform uh, will enable the customer now to be given a choice to be the solution to climate change. Mm. And the way we do this um, is to empower them to be able to design clothes with zero waste, be able to pull materials that are overstock fashion or what we call dead stock fabric. Um, and then in the meantime, uh, this is all happening before this point of sale, be able mm. to look at the environmental impact of those fabrics that they're about to choose for their zero waste designs, be connected to the people um, who are going to be making the clothes, right? Mm. And then sharing their creations on a platform that will celebrate them being the change solution that we need to happen in the world today. Mm. Um, a little bit about background on fashion today. Um, it's mind-boggling to think that every second, a dump truck full of clothing heads to the landfill on this earth. Yeah, that's every second, a garbage truck full of clothing heads to the landfill on this earth. Mm -hmm. You know, they, we have a problem. Right. This is a three trillion, almost three trillion dollar industry where over 70 percent of it ends up in the landfill or is burned. That's over 10 percent of all carbon emissions today on this earth. And if left unchecked, it's going to go up to 50 percent. So what we've decided to do in Dana and Dana's the meaning of Dana is offering. We're offering a new way of looking at connecting to people and planet through the medium of fashion, right? Mm. And this fashion technology platform that we're unveiling allows us to tackle that one issue, which is global textile waste. We used to, when we launched, um, only draw from sustainable fibers, which is um, organic fibers for our clothing. Um, and we're a fair trade certified brand. 
Um, but since 2017, we pivoted to not extracting any more from our resources from the earth because of the calamity um, and the abundance of overstock material and mm. this textile and this what we call dead stock, right? So it was my conscientious effort to pivot, joined a group of organizations um, who are very keen on moving the dial so that we can address this huge problem in the fashion textile world. But also um, there is a consortium called the Global Fashion Agenda in 2017 that announced to the world that we have this problem and we can't just talk about it, we should do something about it. Mm -hmm. And so that initiated the whole entire 2017 um, call and it was called the 2020 Circular Fashion Commitment, right? Um, about 90 brands joined in, and we're one of them. This mm. year is the final report that's being issued at the end of November, I believe, and how each and every brand is taking measures in the area of psychability, right? So it's circular fashion. And I'm happy to go into what that means as well. Hmm. Well, I, I would love to, because I'm, I'm also curious, starting to think about, I guess, like the, the end ambition um, in that, you know, our, our, has, has enough uh, clothing been produced, has enough of you know, what we need for the textiles been extracted to where if we are creating a circular fashion economy, do we have everything that we already need to clothe the world already in production, I guess, mm -hmm. but I, I'd be curious to hear a bit more into that of, of explaining the, the commitment and, you know, what you mean by measures, like how ambitious those are uh, in, in uh, making this, this circular fashion commitment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the question. Um, so I want to give credit to Ellen MacArthur Foundation, right? That was the foundation that called for change. Mm. Um, circular fashion is one of the strategies of circular economy, right? Um, this, and that's what um, this whole entire initiative is about. It's actually a lifestyle, mm. right? And there are cities in the world that have committed to circular economy. There's generations in the world that are now devoted to that in every industry. So you have plastics, you have food, circular food, you have uh, t even toys now going circular, right? Mm. So it's a mindset shift. And the mindset is if we can extend the life of a product as long as possible, then we should. So mm -hmm. it doesn't end up in the landfill or get burned, right? Um, in the circular fashion world, we have what we call four strategies to that. that. The first one is you designed a piece of clothing with psychability in mind, the ability to disassemble, right? Uh, the ability to um, use materials that have already had um, uh, been in the system, right? Um, so these are what you call designing for psychability. The second strategy is you take back. So the brands take back clothing, uh, empowering the customer to when the life of the clothing is done, then, you know, you have what you call have a re you take back program and we're doing that as well. The third one is using the current garments, right? Uh, so your secondhand clothing and mm -hmm. having a resale to that. So you may have noticed the spike in... Uh, in the Gen Z and the millennials, all <laughs> wanting to, uh, you know, wear vintage clothes and they're shopping in thrift stores. It's a $51 billion market, believe it or not. And, wow. and, ex and really pushing, right? Um, that's the third one, you know, you're using garments and you, you're reselling it. And then of course the fourth one is what we call uh, recycling. You taking the 
dead stock or you're taking the fabric as feed stock, putting it into a machine, right? Using new breakthrough technology and a new fiber comes out, right? So again, you're not extracting from the earth. Now that has just happened within, I would say, three to five years. There's some new breakthrough technology happening. Mm. Um, and so during the 2017 Copenhagen Fashion Summit, these 90 brands that signed up for the 2020 commitment, we were asked to just do one of the four, right? Donna chose to do all four. <laughs> and, and as of last year, as of this year, um, you know, our, our product, which is the first product of its kind in the world, the, the circular memory jacket, uh, it's a, a first of many designs to come out, uh, actually takes into consideration all four. We designed it such that it was taken into consideration. And so, um, so far we've had a number of customers that just love their, their circular memory jacket. <laughs> Um, and why? Because we can go into that for sure. I mean, it's just an incredible amount of stories that people can talk about when they send their own clothing in, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the best part, it's, it's a learning curve for a lot of people. Um, what we're doing is co-creating with value. And then we have a very important um, partner, which is Worn Again Technologies. You know, the fourth one I talked about, which is the feedstock and a new one. So one again, technologies um, is based in the UK and they have this breakthrough technology. Um, and we're hoping that the way I see it in the future, companies like this uh, will be the solution and every continent in the world will end up having a factory like the one again technologies because feedstock will go uh, will be part of the equation, just like corrugated box factories, right? Mm. So there's one, I believe, in Staten Island, um, you know, many actually, where you can take paper and make it into boxes. Well, guess what? You take clothing and make it into new fiber, right? Mm. So uh, if you look at what's happening in the next few years, if this were to be predominantly in every continent, then that closed loop system, right, will enhance our lifestyle because we don't have to extract more. Our carbon footprint will definitely be reduced. Yeah. So those are the four strategies of the circular fashion system um, that we've adopted. Um, there is a huge component to awareness building as well, education of customers. Um, and for us, at Donna, we believe that co-creation with value is the fundamental underlying principle of every human being. Mm. And so uh, along those lines, particularly, I mean, it, 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 as it relates to this newest platform that you're coming out with, like obviously the need for it, uh, uh, given uh, the concerns of climate devastation are so acute and you know, we're well aware of that but your method in intimately involving these, these potential purchasers uh, in that process, why was that the method that you've, you've chosen to go with? Because when you explained it earlier, it seems so well connected. <laughs> the, the, the potential buyer is so well connected with the process from every end of it. Well, what's, what's the methodology behind that? Right. Um, it's stunning, but... Corey, you as a person, right, you have a conscience, right? Mm. We believe everybody does. And that if you were told that there was some sort of exploitation that happened either on the personal side, that means the people, the human component, or that we were giving you data that, you know, your clothing was made and here's the impact and you showed visually or you, you showed the amount that you probably would have a hard time sitting with that. Correct. Mm, definitely. Right. And so this is what we call brand transparency. And it has shown 
over and over again from the time the Rana Plaza disaster happened, which was fundamentally a pivotal time in the history of fashion. That was 2013 in back in Bangladesh when a building basically collapsed and killed over 1,300 people, mm. right? And understand that the United States um, develops, produces over 95% of all of its clothing outside of the U.S. So the global supply chain is outside. A lot of them were in these developing countries, right? The question was starting to be, how could this possibly happen? Because the health and safety of the workers were undermined, even mm. though they were told over and over again that was um, an issue for the building. And, and then it just had a ripple effect in terms of voices not being heard for the workers to living wage. And then the rippling effect, and that happened with uh, a huge explosion, a campaign called what we call hashtag fashion revolution, mm. hashtag who made my clothes, right? So people wanted to know. Okay. So now with 200 million people every year across the globe on 24th of April, which is marks the anniversary of this calamity, this disaster, hashtag who makes my clothes, right? And it's a it's a huge global movement so that brands can can really adhere to what consumers are wanting to know, right? What is the social environmental impact on my piece of clothing that I'm about to purchase? Right. So Donna in 2018, um launched a campaign called Where Our Values. I made this statement, and that is, um, what we value, we protect, mm. right? What we value, we spend time, energy, resources, and money on, right? But what we value takes the form of matter, and that could be a piece of cloth, right? And so when we wear a piece of clothing, it's actually an extension of ourselves because mm. we want to demonstrate either an expression, its performance, its functionality, it's serving a purpose, right? But if we use the same consciousness that we have and say, actually, what I'm what this clothing has is more than just matter it's actually vibration it's energy it's the person behind it it's actually connected to the planet right mm -hmm. and then we start realizing what we value fundamentally goes in every single form so in 2019 um we published this report Right. It's called the Way Our Values Report. It's free. It's downloadable. 5,000 over respondents from 90 over countries responded. And the number one question we asked was, is there brand customer value alignment? Is there um, an ability to see that customers, what customers are demanding today, that brands are actually giving? And you know what the result was? 97% of the customers said, we need greater brand transparency, mm. right? And so if you dig deep, what they were looking for is fundamentally just knowing who makes my clothes and what the impact is. And so we took that, right? And said, how can we make a difference? What's going on to the world today? Right? So. The choice today is only after the point of sale that you, you know, you get to know what your clothing has done mm. uh, because a brand will tell you that they'll tell you uh, 
the information about whether it was made in a fair trade factory, living wage, and things like that, right? They'll show you photographs um, and the photographs of the factory, hopefully, and it's certified, right? Um, I'm not talking about all the brands who don't show this. And then on the environmental side, what brands are showing that is you buy a piece of garment and this is the impact. And we went further. How can we take this further? Well, let's give the customer that choice, right? Mm -hmm. We have technology. This is what technology is about. <laughs> I mean, technology is an enabler, right? So we want to empower the customer now to be that that, that change agent in the world. Why? Because before the point of sale, the customer now can look at the designs he or she wants, pull from materials that he or she wants, be asked, do you want to know who is going to make your clothes? Right? And do you want to know what the impact of that choice of fabric is before we make the clothing for you? So we don't carry any inventory. Everything is dead stock. As a customer, you will be connected to at least four people on the journey of your clothing, right? This is the new norm. This, we believe, is the new norm of the future. Mm. Right? So then the customer takes that piece of clothing, right? And um, be able to share it on the virtual world because there'll be 3D rendering, be able to scan it, create your avatar, and then share it in social virtual world, what he or she has just done to impact the world. And here's the fun part. To be able to talk to the customer now, the customer and the worker gets connected, right? So Corey now knows who exactly made his, your clothes, right? And so as you travel the journey of life and you want to show that, that your customer, that worker, gratitude, right? Maybe share a note. You should be able to. Mm -hmm. Now, when you start valuing people's lives because they just served you with a piece of cloth that now has forever changed the way you look at it, right? Um, there's gonna be a fundamental shift in the way you look at life because now you have impacted in, an, in a whole different way, mm. right? So we akin this to perhaps the smartphone, right? When, you, when, when, when it was phone, that was one way of sharing with the world. But when the smartphone came out, it took it to a whole different level, didn't it? It allowed right. the customer to create montage and, and, and videos and, you know, and be able to share their memories. And so what, I, what we're saying is create those memories with your clothing. Those are priceless, priceless memories, correct? Oh, yeah. And those priceless memories connect you with social environmental good in the world. So there's another statement I make that ever since I started this company 12 years ago, and it's come to fruition now. And that is every day you place a piece of clothing on yourself that has the power to connect you with people and planet through the medium of fashion. Mm. Right? And that's, that's what we're doing. We're offering you a way of connecting like no other. And so if, if that is the, the future of, of fashion for us, and I'm, I'm very excited about that future, uh, I'm, I'm interested from your perspective, uh, where, where do you think the gap is then between where we are now and, and that sort of future reality? Uh, because I think there is, you know, I, I wonder as well, and maybe I just have a bias towards it because I, I see it in the news. I see contradictions of, you know, what, larger corporations and brands, you know, be it Nike or whomever say, you know, for in the instance of in this year, contextually standing with social justice movements uh, here in the United States, but, you know, not kind of walking the walk and how they are, are treating workers abroad, you know, in China, for example. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so, 
you know, my thought is like, I, I see that I'm aware of those contradictions. And I think that, you know, it being published in, you know, mainstream media, the guardian, New York times, whatever it might be. I'm like, shouldn't everyone else know this? I I'm wondering why aren't, you know, Nike's sales being hit harder? You know, maybe they mm-hmm. are, I just might not be keen to it. Um, but I'm curious, you know, what your thoughts are on why we aren't exactly there yet to this, this future that you've described that I would so love for us to, to be in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a, there's a real calamity um, and tragedy in our system, our economic system. And that is um, the profiting that is going on, right? Mm-hmm. Um, at the expense of, you know, social environmental good, right? Um, it's a fundamental flaw for sure. And hence why sustainability has just, you know, taken off in the fashion world because with COVID, we've seen that it's the num- one of the number one issues now, right? Mm-hmm. So um, in the fashion world, you know, it's a $3 trillion industry, right? Some of the top billionaires in the world, if you, if, if you were to take a look at the top five billion, billionaires in the world, I would say at least 200 of them are in the fashion industry, mm. right? Um, there's a lot of issues when it comes to diversity and inclusion in the fashion industry. Only 14% of all major brands in the world are women, N- let alone minority. Let's not even go there, mm. right? Um, it's driven by what we call the shareholder economy, which is to show profit quarter after quarter after, at the expense of people and planet, right? And so we have to thank, first of all, the internet and the mobile phone for giving safe haven to some of the workers to be able to highlight how they're being treated, mm-hmm. right? Um, and even though they have mobile phones, do they have a place of you know, safety to actually upload that or will they be axed from their jobs, correct? So the, are there laws in place today that fundamentally protects the rights of humans in any workspace, let alone country, right? Mm-hmm. In the United States, we may have that. We can talk about you know, how employers treat employees you know there are platforms where that is being told same way in terms of food reviews and things like that we need to up the curve on this one for fashion right that needs to come out right um it is an issue it really is nike you know 30 billion dollar company big company again you you know they they might you have to give them kudos because they're also one of the circular fashion brands in the world that that's signed up for that. Mm. Right. Um, but there are degrees of how we disclose information today. I believe that we're coming to a focal point in humanity where consumers now have more power than ever to demand and they should right Mm -hmm. because if you if you can endorse a brand the way that you can today then it's showing that a brand needs to respond Mm. accordingly um nike nike has a custom custom your custom your own shoe platform Right, it's the only one of its kind, I think. I mean, six years ago, I believe it's you know, maybe five things you can customize. I think now it's almost seventeen. Hmm. Right, it's a very expensive platform to build. It's what we emulated um, to be for the apparel world, right? So this is what we're doing. You can actually customize it from the from the get go designs. But coming back to your your question, Corey. Why? Because I I really believe people can isolate 
that can compartmentalize, mm -hmm. right? There's no flow here, right? There's no roadmap. And so what if there was technology to showcase for every garment that is created that there is a map of all the people who touched it, right? And there is technology that, you know, you can show what the environmental impact is and from which part of the world. There, the, the, the industry is actually looking at traceability like that, mm. right? Uh, I was just in a conversation this morning with um, a woman from Mud Jeans, and they're looking at traceability within jeans. And as you reuse it, how many times it has been reused, right? So those are, technology again is an enabler. But I really do believe that if we, again, we have to value, <laughs> this word comes back again, right? What is it that we value, right? How, how do we value uh, a person from what they do in life? And so for us, um, I, I often tell my team, you know, be, be ready to, to speak up. Uh, it may, video may not be your choice of medium, but I might be the founder and CEO of Donna Inc., but everybody shouldn't be known what they've contributed to this platform and how they've contributed to this platform, mm. right? I want the world to know that we need to honor every person along the way. This is the issue. We don't have a voice, even in the developed country, right? Um, and so when you honor people along the way, you're actually honoring yourself and you're honoring the elements, mm. right? Uh, the wisdom of the ages will tell you that is, that is the, the human spirit in itself, right? Because you see in others what you, when, what you can and cannot see in yourself sometimes, right? And, and, and to build a new a culture and a society that is you know connected not just on phones but at a human level right is something that we all aspire to be uh, I truly believe that the medium of fashion can do that we're hoping that we can look at fashion and we can look at our clothing and say you know what uh, I went to that rock concert. I bought that T-shirt. My 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 dad's swimming trunks. Oh wow! Now he's passed away. Um, I took that dress and went to that bar mitzvah. Right? Um, you know that was my grandmother's scarf. Now taking all of that, those memories, using technology, right? Putting that into a new piece of garment holding it very dear to oneself, being able to tell stories in a whole different way, mm. right? So have we started that conversation? How many of us actually have those conversations within a piece of garment that we actually have memories, priceless memories that we can share? This is what we're doing. The circular memory jacket, um, we have testimonials and we have case studies now and I just did a two-hour video of this this boy called Adam who took 10 pieces of t-shirts from his from his family and himself and put it into uh, his circular memory jacket and he and the family got together and we were talking about each piece and what it meant I'll give you an example one of it was a was a simple blue t-shirt with a big pie on it the <laughs> pie symbol and I said, Adam, tell me what about, what, what is that? Why did you choose that jacket to put it in? Why did you choose that t-shirt to put in your jacket? And he said, Shamini, can I just tell you that was my first time I ever repeated 100 digits in the pie for my class. And I said, oh my God, you actually did that? He says, yeah. And, and I got a prize for that, mm. right? And that change, that, that whole time, he did that, changed his life because he's now pursuing a mathematical pathway in Korea and he wants to be, you know, a mathematic, 
professor, just like his dad going to Berkeley, he wants to do that so he can use mathematics to help uh, humanity. Mm. Okay, so do you see the stories? Right? I mean, that is one t-shirt. I mean, it, it, it has me wonder, especially like with the absolute scale that, that, I mean, we keep bringing them up, but the, the Nikes, whomever they, they deal with. And that's such a very customized, personalized exp- experience attached to one garment. Uh, well, I guess it's a few that, you know, historic shirts and things that they had beforehand. But I, I'm wondering, is, can that be replicated on that? level like does it need to be is that what the the future of fashion should look like for us or inherently uh i guess on the scale on which we current currently operate in the fashion industry you know fast fashion or or what have you is that just inherently flawed and that it shouldn't exist because that's Mm -hmm. such an intimate experience that you're you're discussing but currently the fashion industry is operating at such wild global scale you know is is it possible should we not have that? You know, I'm curious. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know that fact. The fashion industry is a free fall now. Uh, you know, we're expected like thirteen thousand stores to go bankrupt, right? I mean, to close. Sorry, tons to go bankrupt. Um, and one data point is there's a drop in. Th- it's like three hundred billion dollars drop in sale, mm. right? Um. Everybody needs clothes on to make a decision. I mean, that's that. <laughs> we're we're going to get what three, four more billion people on this planet, right? So you can just imagine at least at least four more billion clothing items to be worn every day. Um, can we stop this phenomenon of growth? No, because we need more people. But do we need as many clothing per person? I don't believe so. But where is the opportunity in fashion then? If we're slowing down our consumption, right, in buying fashion, right, because it's not serving the needs of uh, our current value system, which is we don't really need to have a piece of clothing every two weeks or, you know, 60 pieces of clothing a year then where is the industry going? And I believe that there is new fashion technology coming in for uh, entertainment of of the consumer. And what do I mean by that? It's one of the features that we are also launching uh, in the future. So we have version one for sure. But here's the projection going forward, right? So Corey has now designed 10 jackets or 10 pieces of shirts online in his virtual studio, right? Mm. He's actually collaborated with his social network and friends to maybe even design it together, right? Um, He may just purchase one, but the rest, here's the thing. He can play with it in his virtual world in a community setting, gamify it, perhaps, right? That's the potential. Because the technology is getting there, whereby people just want, the same way we do gamification, we, you know, we play games, mm-hmm. we can do fashion shows ourselves. Why not? Mm. Right? Uh, we can, you know, we can intersperse photography right with fashion and come up with our own second life (laughs) right uh that's where we're going to the fashion world is exploding in the virtual digital world and with 3d and avatars right uh we'll be able to do that Mm. so the the need to just show fashion in in form may still always be there, but not as high in terms of fast fashion that we used to be, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's it's more important now to be able to show uh, in various aspects 
um, the connection, not only just in, in terms of environmental impact, you know, you'll be getting a scorecard and how much impact you'll have with all your fashion going forward. It's a given. But in the nutritional labeling of fashion is coming on board. Um, but I think it's the honoring. I really believe the honoring, right? What if, what if Corey could actually reward the worker that worked on his last purchase? Tip, you know, maybe find out that the worker was a single mom and, you know, putting the kid to school. What if there was an extension of that to do a micro loan? Mm. Right? Um, there's so just just so many opportunities in the fashion industry that we haven't really thought about. And this is this, I believe, is the new frontier, which is giving giving the consumer a lot more, not just information, data, the choices. Mm. Right? That's very altruistic for sure, and, and, and the ability to impact in a very significant way. But yes, I, I do believe the virtual world is actually going to take off in fashion. It's already showing itself. Mm. It was pushed to the limit because of COVID with, uh, with all the fashion shows, right? Yeah. And, and, and people were watching it online, right? Mm. And you mentioned uh, uh, far earlier that I think maybe 90, 95% of uh, um, the supply chain for the fashion industry in the U.S. is abroad, Right. And as well, uh, Don is a fair trade certified uh, um, brand. And I'm, I'm wondering then, like, what is, what is the ideal? Because there is as well this priority of, of having uh, all goods, not just clothing items, you know, some preference to it being produced locally or regionally or just closer in proximity. I'm wondering in this future vision uh, of fashion, in, in your opinion, like what is the ideal on that? You know, especially as it relates to honoring the, those workers. Um, but is it is it is it to look as it, I mean, obviously it doesn't look as it does now in the, the realm of how well these workers are treated. But I guess in the placement is that still you know in Southeast Asia or China or where they, wherever mm. they are currently is that mm -hmm. is that what you see the future of fashion remaining to be? Mm -hmm. It would be localized. I mean, in a nutshell, it will be localized a lot more. COVID has, uh, the pandemic has forced, because of global supply chains being cut or temporarily uh, being impacted, to look at local op options and solutions. I truly believe that um, more jobs will be generated here in this country using uh, already supply from overstock materials, you know, uh, overstock inventory. There is a huge propensity to move towards uh, regional and local um, in the U.S. And we are hoping all our clothing today is made in the United States with mm -hmm. materials found in the United States for people in the United States. Yes, you know, we would, if somebody, you know, wanted it from abroad, from London or Netherlands or Japan and wanted one of our clothing and they wanted to send their clothing. Yes, you know, it's possible we would we would relate to them that, you know, it's carbon footprint that you're adding even though you're using dead stock. So uh, and one of the things that we would like to do is to say, are you prepared to offset that yourself? Mm. Right. And we would give them the opportunity to to do that. But yes, I, I do believe, and then with, of course, the new technologies we're talking about, like One Again Technologies, Vinish Cell, Evernew, all those technologies coming in, which will allow then uh, localized factories, right? So using feedstock. Um, I don't believe it's going to happen overnight. <laughs> There's going to be a gradual shift, and I hope that gradual ship, shift will be exponentially uh, uh, looked at because of the up and enabling technologies as well. Um, I would like to say that there is another um, opportunity here, and that is resources that is considered waste being turned into fiber. So it's not just clothing. Today you have resources such as pineapple waste 
uh, being turned into fiber, there's food being turned into fiber, there's grape being turned into fiber after they make their wine, right? So there's new technology over there, which we're in favor of as long as, you know, it can be utilized that way. Um, and so there is this, this enormous opportunity to think outside the box. Um, even in here in the Bay Area, you know, there's a great company called Bolt Threads. I'm sure you've heard of them mm -hmm. in Berkeley that is using, um, they're inspired by nature, just like looking at, at uh, spider silk and making it in the strength just like spiders and then like mycelium with mushrooms and you know that and then of course there's the new meat right there's a, there's the new um uh, uh what do you call it you know instead of using leather you're using lab grown right. technology so we haven't even touched that but that's also another opportunity of growth within a country right um and i think you know one day you and i will will share in each other's um, experiences, what fabric do you have there, right? Um, over and above what memory it holds. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. So I think um, the consumers want different sort of choices going up in the future. But it's, it really does pertain to adhering to uh, what we need most in life today, and that is the human connection to, to people along the way, as well as understanding our environmental impact. Hmm. Hmm. Certainly. Well, uh, uh, Shamini, I really appreciate your time. Would you mind if I asked you a few uh, rapid fire questions before we finish sure. up? Sure. Uh, so let's get started with a, a morning routine or a daily habit. What, what's one that you absolutely have to stick to? Mm. So one of my things that I do is I meditate in the morning um, and I breathe with um, from the top and going all the way down to my to the earth and giving gratitude to the breath, which joins all of humankind and, and um, we engage on our life because of breath, air, yes. water and heat. Mm, sounds lovely. <laughs> uh, what, what's uh, a book that you always recommend or, or maybe one that's, that's recently impacted you? Oh, wow. Uh, so many. Um, but the one that uh, I, I love, you know, is um, Jonathan Livingston Seagull. <laughs> um, it's a very old book, but a, a, uh, a book that talks about looking outside of the norm and um and looking at human potential right mm. it's it was it was i think it was created like maybe 40 years ago but it, it's still relevant every time i i read it over and over again it makes me think of something else mm. well we'll make sure to have that one linked up um and then is there any particular organization or, or business, perhaps in the, the fashion industry, uh, that uh, you've really admired recently, whose, whose work you've really appreciated, who's worthy of getting a little recognition here? In the fashion industry? Mm. Yep. Um, I would say the Ellen MacArthur Foundation and the Global Fashion Agenda, for sure, that we, you know, we relied on heavily uh, in terms of our circular principles and how we've designed for circular, for sure. Mm. Um, I, I must give a big shout out to um, the Organic Trade Association for the Fiber Council who instates the, the whole entire organic side that we grew up with, right? So if you want to use organic, they were very instrumental. And also the Fair Trade uh, Fair Trade International Group that uh, really adhered to the fact of um, you know, treating people with living wages and giving them a voice. Mm. Of course, even though they're not in fashion, but we owe a big shout out to the whole entire B Lab community. 
mm. right? Because we're the ethos of of Dana is um, putting people, planet, same level as profit. You can do it all together to prosper mm. and live in, you know, and live in harmony. And then uh, final, maybe more open-ended what, what's one piece of advice that you'd give to the the aspiring or, or active impact driven entrepreneur uh the impact entrepreneur who who's looking at um the next thing they're about to do is ask yourself why you're doing what you're doing how you will impact people with what you're doing as well as how you will show respect for the environment. Mm. Very important, right? Uh, that should be in the DNA. Like how will you give voice to people and empower them? And on the planet side, how will you be able to show that it was integral to your entire uh, business model, business system, know why you're doing this. Mm. Excellent piece of advice to end on. Thank you so much, Shamini. Thank you. I appreciate you having this opportunity to, um, to even give fashion a, a platform um, and to be able to, to, to hear um, how transformation is happening even at a granular level for all of humankind. Mm. Well, the absolute least that we can do here. <laughs> y'all are y'all are doing the more challenging work. So we, we really appreciate it. Any final places to direct folks to keep up with Donna? Yes, uh, we will be um, announcing a lot more initiatives in our platform on Donna.com. Um, so keep us uh, in mind and we hope that you join us as our tagline says we're wearing the world but we're co-creating with that mm. so thank you very much i appreciate it thank you we'll have everything linked up at the show notes growensemble.com thanks again thank you mm-hmm.